me introduce you, Mystico! This is MLW Intimidation Games. Oh, no! Oh, no! And I don't know about all that. Little Birdie told me some people in your ranks may not be as loyal as you think they are. And the number one Baka Gajin just got sent into Splinter. Wait, what is this? That's Jimmy Lloyd! Jimmy Lloyd never shot away from a fight! The civil war for Carcosa has begun, but I can promise you it will be anything but civil. The world is watching. Kojima! Nariato again! Kojima finds a way! Alice Kane and Satoshi Coach. wasn't going to end a street fight in New York City. Hit him again! And it's hit. Rapid fire and salt! Buy the ticket! Take the ride! Watch back, but no! Oh. He eats it anyway! The balance of power continues to shift here in Major League Wrestling. It's a pivotal time for everyone as we welcome you to a sold-out, jam-packed to the Raptors, New York City, for once upon a time in New York. My name is Joe Dombrowski. Alongside me is Christian Cole. And what a week you've chosen to join us. MLW World Champion Satoshi Kojima will see action. But what is the state of his MCL? And what of this alliance with former champion Alex Kane? We'll find out when Kane joins Cozy Mac to take on World Titan Federation superstars Richard Holiday, Filthy Tom Lawler, and Joshua Bishop as both sides look to send a message days before the daunting war chamber. World Titan Federation also represented by Davey Boy Smith Jr. He goes one-on-one -on -one with the New Japan Pro Wrestling Television Champion Matt Riddle. Two very distinct styles, two contrasting philosophies. They'll collide one-on-one -on -one tonight. That's not all. Bring the kids in close because it's story time. Once upon time in New York, there was a number one contenders match between Zeta and Delmi XO. Once upon a time in New York, AJ Francis made his debut against Mr. Thomas. And once upon a time in New York, the boss was here. Court Bauer, what will he have to say? We're going to find out tonight. I can't wait for all of that. We kick things off with the Azteca Lucha State of the Union Address with Cesar Duran. What does El Jefe have on his mind? We're about to find out. Grace! 
sexy and I don't get that here. But don't you worry, don't you worry. On May 11th, on May 11th, I'm the mastermind behind the most spectacular super lucha event ever existed. And I wanna make a challenge to that puta Salina. I know you're listening, I know you're listening. I want you to bring your best luchadores, if you haven't, to my super lucha event. And let's see who has the power in reality over here. And speaking of luchadores, I will unveil a super luchadora that is gonna take over the women's division in MLW. That featherweight title is hers, and nobody here is gonna stop her. And that, who, who said that? Couple BFF showing up. I don't care about your Dora. I don't care about no boots. Swiper ain't swiping nothing. Cause I'm next in line for that featherweight championship. Yeah, if you think for one second. He's just kept. No love for BRG. If you think for one second that your little luchadora gets to cut to the front of the line, well, I say. You never. Excuse me, but. <laughs> Who the hell are you? Who are you? Uh, uh, is that a joke? You're not a joke. Who the hell are you? Excuse me, I'm Zeta, the World Time Federation Federate, aka Tom Bestie. And the rightful. is completely disrespectful to me. So, disrespect me one more time if you have it. Uh, we got off on the wrong foot. We got off on the wrong foot. I just want to understand why all you Lucha promoters are so, what's the word? Shady. Because we don't deal with babies. Ba babies? Look, 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 look. It's one thing for that smurf headed bitch, Selena. Quiet. Quiet. Uh oh. What the hell? I said quiet. I'm quiet. Zeta, you and your little inbred mascot, BRG, you are both the reason why they say that blondes are dumb. But quite frankly, I think that that's a compliment because you two. assaulting one of those what, Azteca what henchmen. Why is John Stamos so mean? John <laughs> Stamos? Thank you. Bestie, Bestie, I got something better. Let's get this W, okay? Sometimes these two are just oblivious. I'm not sure New York City's Listen feeling these guys.
Dog must have heard his name. We wrestlers on the planet so Ichiban a little feather in his cap tonight he looks to prove himself further no shame in that loss but the odds aren't and right here final entrant, representing the calling from Carcosa weighing in at 400 pounds this is Akira, unlikely allies in any other environment, but fending off Ricky Shane Page and Sammy Callahan. Cannonball's hurt, staff is hurt, and we still have a scramble six matchup, and everybody has the same opinion of the notorious, victorious BRG. I'll tell you what, BRG came out early running his mouth. I don't think he realized he had five men to fight off. They seem to take exception to the words before this match. Well, will Cannonball be able to make it to this matchup after Akira and the baseball bat will chart that story? Also, this is the first time, Christian, we've seen Wasted Youth not in a tag team environment. Will we see a makeshift team from Ichiban and Doug, or will we see Wasted Youth end up battling it out? drop kick there. Wasted youth in tandem. You could see the experience between the two. The tag team experience, again, helping them here in this match. They're tag team specialists. But they travel together, they train together, they work out together, and they think alike. But that may not work here in a scramble match. Christian, are you ready to count to one? Oh, you cut off at one. Oh, beautiful right hand by Ichiban. Right, a nice strike. Off. Remember when you left off? One, it was a one. It That's was right. one. Ichiban, such a unique presence here on this MLW roster. 
big right hands from the top position, and Ichiban is fired up. As Cannonball still the worst for rare, Ichiban the toughest to scout. There's a mystique. There's an unknown quality about Ichiban. Love Doug, however. Countered by Marcus Mathers, Philly's finest, 20 years of age, youngest male on the roster, and he explodes with that offense. The striking by Mathers is what really stands out to me. He, he doesn't just use strikes for offense, but for counters as well. He's really just well-versed with those rights and left hands. Doug springs oh. off the bulldog. I'm still curious about uh, Love Doug's relationship status with Moka Miyamoto. We saw them agree to a date a couple months ago. Look at that. Beautiful suplex there, right on his back. And Doug now dropping that right hand. Hey, don't count Doug out in an environment like this. Keep in mind, Christian, love is a battlefield, and Doug is ready to fight. Dylan McKay, the straight edge ledge. All oh, that dexterity. Wow, very impressive. He's straight edge, he's a loner, he's a skateboarder, but he's found his place of purpose in the major league. And Brett Ryan Goslin looked to play spoiler, but if Dylan, at just 24, can stand up for the pack tonight, man, that could be big. Wow. But shoulder first in the road. Yeah, right into that corner post. It's a squared corner post. It's really not meant to be thrown into. Oh, wait a minute. The Federer herself, Zeta, oh, she should be focused on potentially becoming the top contender. You know, say what you want about BRG, but this is where he shines. Those nasty elbows. Look at that clothesline. Goes in, hooks the outside leg. Got a ton of leverage here, Joe. This might be it. No. Man. Well, hey, Gosselin, you can't celebrate. You didn't beat anybody. And Cannonball, all four bills of him, is in the ring. And if he wasn't in a bad mood before, imagine what's going on in his mind now, seeing and reliving what Akira just did to him. That's the uppercut there from Cannonball. Cannonball may bring a war chamber mentality to this scramble here tonight in New York City. Yeah, at the beginning of the match, we might have thought Cannonball was out, but he made his way back into the ring, and now smartly, Ichiban and Love Dog gonna join forces for a moment to try and take this behemoth down. The sick motivations and the high tension for pain is always something to factor in with the calling as Cannonball drills two men with one choke slam, and we may need every member of Wasted Youth we can find to shut Cannonball down. Beautiful kicks there. Now look at this tag team cohesiveness. Tag team specialists. Oh my God! Oh my God. I think Cannonball outweighs both members of Wasted Youth. Come on. Lateral press. And a smart maneuver, unlike what Selena alleged about Brett. Smart maneuver there. It is one fall. You have to interrupt to keep your own hopes alive. And say to scream, hey! And not much you can do in a scramble as Brett Ryan Gosselin. That's some of that World Titan Federation sportsmanship, right? Yeah, it goes with that low bro right in front of the ref. But of course, no disqualification for set of maneuver. Triple super kick right to the face. BRG rolling out. But three wrestlers, oh! Neutralizing Brett, and now they turn on each other. It's an individually minded matchup. One man can win. McKay and Doug collide, but no clear cut advantage. Looks like Doug got the best of it. He seems to be reeling a bit, but man, Doug fighting for his love, fighting for his life here. Trying to get a win in this six man scramble. And they're fighting for momentum. They're and BRG gonna take advantage of a nasty right hand. Say what you want about his attitude, BRG is a violent individual when the bell rings. There's a precision and a technique about Brett Ryan Gosler as he hooks the rope. Hey! Ref saw it. Ref didn't like it. Again, no DQ, but the ref has discretion here. Stopped the count when he saw the leverage was being used illegally with that rope. Just when I said something nice about the guy, he pulled something like that. And now I'm prettier. That's oh, the it, Joe. move. That was disgusting. He beat Doug a month ago, and he would have done it again. But Dylan McKay, at the last second. I'm not sure if I'm going into AFib, but my heart is palpitating with all these changes and pinfall attempts. Beautiful one here by BRG.
dude's attitude. This dude means business. BRG with the dub tonight. A big win for BRG and the WTF. Tor Bauer is here, and he's planning to address the fans of New York City. What does the CEO of Major League Wrestling have on his mind? We'll find out tonight. And we saw him challenge New Japan TV champion Matt Riddle in Intimidation Games. But now he's got Selena De La Renta representing him. Bad Duke Tito is next. Tonight, he makes his debut here in MLW in New York City, and this is one bad dude. Six foot one, 255 pounds, an 18 year pro, and certainly Christian, we're seeing Azteca Lucha versus Promociones Dorado, the power struggle, the signing spree both sides have been on it has been acquisition mode for both sides and it's clear to see why as azteca 66 may just be outsized outclassed and outmatched nasty chops you can hear them from here in our broadcast position and look at the strikes from the japanese well-versed tito and bam beautiful exploder suplex that could do it right there joe Two count only, of course, uh, Selena, Cesar, most uh, uh, synonymous with Lucha Libre, but with Bad Dude Tito, there's not much he can't do when you talk about Styles and an all-around powerhouse on top of that part of the TMDK stable in New Japan with Zack Sabre Jr., uh, Shane Hayes, Mikey Nichols, Fujita. That is uh, all-around great professional wrestling personified, and Bad Dude Tito, man, he may be the most intimidating out of all of them. 
Certainly the relationships between our great company and international companies, New Japan Pro Wrestling, it's heating up in 2024. Tito, an amazing addition to this MLW roster. We saw Tito challenge, oh, what a close line. Challenge Matt Riddle for the New Japan World Television title. Watch this, Joe. Look at back, the power. Back in the games, goodness. oh my lord. Good night. Wow, that was fast. of A.J. Francis back in the Intimidation Games. A.J. seemed to get inside the head of Alex Payne by claiming that not everyone in the Fumaye Fight Club was as loyal as they seem. Those claims are still unconfirmed, but we do know Chief Fight Strategist of Fumaye, Mr. Thomas, has stepped up. Will Thomas prove Fumaye's solidarity, or will Francis find a crack in the foundation? We'll find out tonight. WTF signing of all. AJ Francis 
We know he's a businessman. We know he's an entrepreneur. But to take the money of MSL, to take the money of the World Titan Federation, I didn't chalk that up to AJ Francis' makeup. I do not suck. I am great. Allow me to reintroduce myself. My name is AJ Francis. And you all paid top dollar to see dollar, so pipe down. That is the exact reaction I expect from this garbage town. See, there's trash in the streets and trash in the seats in New York City. Well, we know one group is not going to stand watching the people being trapped on. These men are for the Nobody people. Nobody called you. Uh, shut your mouth. Nobody you called you. You can't be out here running down the people of New York City. They run themselves down. Look nah, at them. No, 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 no. Because the people of New York City love Boumaye. You don't even believe that. Oh, they believe it because Boumaye is for. The people. Boumaye is for. The people. Boumaye is for. The people. Okay, these people might be disillusioned but our elders are not. See, our elders are very disappointed in you. How dare you lose the MLW World Heavyweight Championship during Black History Month? Whoa. You should be ashamed of yourself. Well, we got one day left. And we gonna make some black history here tonight. So Thomas, go beat that hoe's ass. What? This is gonna be a tough fight for AJ Francis. Thomas, this ninja standing near looking. seven feet tall, massive individual. There you go, beat his ass. Oh, there you go, thing, Thomas. This thing is physical go, from the jump. Mr. Yeah. Thomas, yeah. chief fight strategist of the Fumaye Fight Club. Six feet seven of him against the 6'5", 330, AJ Francis. And man, there's been a lot of trash talk here from different locations. Oh, he caught him, Joe. Francis catching Mr. Thomas. Beautiful counter there, though. From social media to the video walls, for the first time, AJ Francis and Fumaye are in the same building at the same time. It's the explosion we were all waiting for. Don't forget, still ahead on Once Upon a Time in New York, will it be a storybook ending for Matt Riddle or Davey Boy Smith Jr.? That's going to be physical. Plus, Cozy Max challenged the World Titan Federation. That's still ahead. Oh, look out! AJ Francis just caught Thomas. Thomas about 270. And Francis just drills Mr. Thomas. Somebody that can, I think, AJ Francis can walk on the field today and be an offensive lineman. Same with Thomas for that matter, but Francis used all 330 and with the knee in the corner. Good God, that's called Tennessee whiskey. I see this match, I think about Max Crosby versus Trent Williams. I think about big offensive linemen versus big defensive linemen. We are blessed to see it tonight here in New York City. Well, Francis has been vocal on social media claiming that he created a movement for the people before Boumaye. But it was Kane and Thomas that said, no, 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 you didn't lead that movement. Whoa. You were a follower. And Mr. Thomas follows up with a Hurricane Rana. Yeah, beautiful athleticism shown there. The agility of Mr. Thomas, it's a surprise when you see him. He looks just like a monster, but he can move with the best of them. Christian, I think we've only scratched the surface of what we can see Mr. Thomas do. A lot of times it's Alex Kane making the headlines. He's at the uh, front and center of the Boumaier Fight Club. Hey, what's St. Laurent doing up there? Something he's gonna regret, wait a minute. AJ Francis, oh, just hit the cash out. Oh, no, 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 World Titan Federation. Both legs hooked, the leg. Joe. Jeez. Damn. You got to think the distraction had something to do with that victory there. Without question. you winner, the Silver Tongue Silverback, A.J. Francis. A.J. Francis. You know we are, sir. Scores a victory on behalf of the World Titan Federation.
action over the Gumay Fight Club. We've seen AJ Francis claim there's some cracks, there's some doubt, there's uncertainty in the Gumay Fight Club. Did AJ's win tonight take another step to proving that rumor true? Our bet online replay shows you AJ Francis here to make a statement. But is there a fair to his statement about the Gumay Fight Club? Well, Christian, the Gumay Fight Club has always been is upon you. The body count indeed rises. New soldiers, more violence. We are the fire that will burn your world to the ground. All will burn as I unleash my new blood into the world of MLW. Hail! Contra! Hail! Contra! It seems no one is safe here at MLW, and that's always true when you're the world champion. Satoshi Kojima presented with a brand new MLW world title belt on our social media channels. Unfortunately, that moment was marred by a savage attack by the World Titan Federation, which left Kojima's already injured MCL further damaged and in question. Kojima has vowed to make it to War Chamber in two weeks and will compete tonight in our trio's main event. But first, we have seen several athletes vie to be called the number one contender to the featherweight title, but none have been louder than Delmi Exo and Zeta. They'll meet one-on-one -on -one with the hopes of determining a definitive top challenger. And Janai's representation, Selena De Laurenta, will be right here on commentary to watch it all. It's next! Promotion Estorado is back. And I have great surprises for you all. Welcome back into Once Upon a Time in New York, still ahead. It is Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu versus Ketch. It's a free spirit for state sports entertainment superstar. Matt Riddle, Danny Boy Smith Jr. is tonight. <laughs> You failed, my believers. What's up? Hey, 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 I am coming for power, and I'm coming for revenge. Selena De La Renta now controls the MLW middleweight, and now the MLW featherweight title for both the and Dorado, a major dominant statement. Janai Kai, you have something that belongs to the God Queen. Who put this here? No, no, no. Did you put this here? The, the bag? Yes, you. Is this? Delmi may have just gotten the key to all of her success, but at what cost? Is he still in the hole? What do you mean he's not there? Well, where is he? Miss me? No way! El Jefe is back! I will make your dream a reality. You will take the title from Cubano Romero. Mistico! It's La Mistico! Ah, <laughs> uh, come on, stop complaining. That's, a, that's an $8,200 Dior cologne, okay, you moron? 
It smells putrid in here. I can tell this booth needed something masculine. Is that 99 cent store cologne? I'm, I'm having trouble breathing. Yeah, you know what? I, I, I'm gonna run this show. <laughs> and you, Gringo Ring announcer, go! I can't see. <laughs> the following bout is set for one fall with the winner receiving an MLW World Featherweight title shot. Which you can see first, accompanied to the ring by her bestie, Brett Ryan Gosling. Hailing from a place you could never afford to go, World Titan Federation Federat. This is Seda. Well, of course, here with the Mochione Serrano, Selena Del Renta. I assume that you're here, Selena, to scout the next top contender for the featherweight title. I think you mean victim. Okay. Okay. <laughs> We've seen nothing but victims courtesy of Janai Kai thus far, but Zayn has been claiming that she wants a title shot for many, many months. The featherweight, the diva of the World Titan Federation. Zayna wants too much. This opposition I cannot believe this. And check out the bottom of the screen, this confrontation. What could they be talking about? Cesar Duran and Brett Ryan Gosselin at ringside. And, and I was gonna mention a moment ago, uh, Delmi Exo was the prior women's featherweight champion before Janai Kai, who was the uh, MLW Halloween Phantom, debuted and defeated her her first night in the organization. And Janai Kai has had a stranglehold on that title ever since. And whether it's a number one contender or a $5,000 prize, no one has stepped up to Janai Kai. <laughs> well, that's true. At least you got something right. But what we do know as well, Selena, is that one of these athletes will oppose Janai Kai next. And what's your scouting report? What's your preference on what you'd like to see? Well, regardless of who it is, what do you think is going to happen, Average Joe? Well, I think the law of odds would tell us that Janai Kai may have the situation in hand. I think that you have stated the truth. Okay. But last time Janai met Delmi, Cesar Duran was not We're not, not talking the about last time, okay. right? No. You're talking about the past now. We're talking about the future. And everything that Cesar touches, well, gets canceled. Kind of like see. that underground TV show. You I know see. what I'm talking about? I do know what you're talking about. Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, Zeta now firing away on Delmi. What do you think of what the World Titan Federation have done? Tag team championships in their control now, pursuing the MLW world title. I think that they need some upgrades in the women's department. I see. So you uh, have made it very clear that you don't consider Zeta a legitimate challenger to Janai Kai. Is there anything that the WTF and St. Laurent can do to change that? I, s I think, like, Maybe we should put a wig on Davy Boy, and that oh. might be a better option. Right. Wow. Yeah. There's a leg sweep by Zeta. That would be an intriguing fight, but be that as it may, oh, cover here. likely as the shoulders are down for two. Keep in mind at one point, what Zeta, look out, hits a code red. Is that enough? And when Z 
Zeta first made uh, inferences about wanting a title match. We saw St. Laurent try to talk her down, give her some Taylor Swift tickets. Right. What's your relationship like with St. Laurent? Is this strained at all? Um, well, I don't think that's ever going to be strained. Uh, it really doesn't matter who he signs. We're, we're good. The problem is, you know, little Barbie over here. Well, Zeta right now looking for a rear naked choke. Delby able to counter. We've questioned if Delmi had lacked confidence if she was in the right mind frame, but now the Delmi driver may erase all doubt. Zeta kicks free. Oh, I'm prettier coming up. This has worked for Brett Ryan Goslin. Will it work for Zeta? Delmi won't let it happen. Delmi at 1.8 dual champion, MLW featherweight, and WXW women's champion in Germany. Would love to get back to those heights as we hit a stalemate. Both challengers down. A lot of war of words with you and Zeta just a couple months ago. I'm curious, uh, what's your opinion? Have you seen that she is improving, Selena? Do you have anything nice to say <laughs> about Zeta? Nice? Uh, well, if I'm being nice, Zeta's kind of delusional. Well, that's pretty nice. Yeah, that's all I have to say. What would happen if Selena De La Renta and Brett Ryan Goslin were ringside at the same time? <laughs> I mean, somebody might end up with no hair. All right. Wow. Looking for I'm prettier a second attempt. If Zeta oh, can look turn, at this. What is this? Azteca Henchman. What is? And Zeta taking a shot. Cesar Duran has the uh, the army in place, and that may lead to the Delby driver. She hit that right on the target. A it could well be it, Joe. Diversion. Tell me, Exo. Oh my goodness, this is ridiculous. By, by Zeta has her own mic. Watch her back here. Consequences for your actions. I love this. I love it. Do you guys want to see a true luchadora mexicana become, become the featherweight champion right now? Hey, do you want to do it? Yes. I don't hear. as always, a $10 war for a $2 whore. Oh. 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 And Jesus Rodriguez just knocked Cesar Duran out and it's complete chaos. Janai Kai and Delmi Exo are throwing hands. And Big bro busting out right now. Will this be a preview of something to come here in MLW? Oh my God, the, the Lucha Pipeline has never been more explosive. 
explosive. Selena's throwing hands. Cesar wants to fight. Janai Kai is kicking out of the moves. And it all surrounds who controls the featherweight title. Janai Kai looking nasty tonight. Absolute killer is Janai Kai. Stuff really breaking down here, Joe. Selena certainly feels like she's in control. Cesar Duran feeling like he's in control. Both factions, so to speak, are absolutely blowing up here in 2024. Bottom line, though, tell me XO is the top contender to Janai Kai, and a lot of power and money goes with that featherweight title. Once upon a time in New York is brought to you by our sports book partners, Bet Online. Bet on almost anything from football to soccer to esports to politics and elections. Head to betonline.ag on your desktop or phone and get started with massive welcome bonuses. The following bout is set for one fall. Introducing first, World Titan Federation Superstar Davy Boy. Jr., Filthy Tom Lawler, they are your new MLW World Tag Team Champions, but it wasn't their athletic prowess that got them to the finish line. Brett Ryan Goslin, St. Laurent, the distraction, and his obnoxious protective helmet, all instrumental in the decision. I am not sports entertained by that. Well, the WGF is well represented with Davey Boy Smith, Josh Bridget by his side, but well represented here on commentary as well. Legitimate, and we're gonna be doing great tonight, fellas. The World Titan Federation stronger than ever. The tag team champions of the world. And his opponent. From Allentown, Pennsylvania, weighing in at 216 pounds, he is the current New Japan Pro Wrestling World Television Champion. If you look at Matt Riddle, he's vascular, right? I like the physicality. The Tam can lose, could use a little work. But we've got two of the best superstars in the world. One on one. I'm so excited. But Davy Boy Smith Jr., you look at the lineage growing up being tortured in the dungeon. The UFC is a joke compared to the dungeon. Davy Boy Smith Jr.'s got a million holes and he's gonna use them all. Well, they say Styles make fights here in the Major League, and you look at uh, Matt Riddle with his black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, an 8-3-2 and two MMA record. Davey Boy Smith Jr., a catch wrestling expert who studied under everyone from Billy Robinson to Josh Barnett. Something's gotta give, whether you call Davey Boy Smith a wrestler, a grappler, a catch wrestler, superstar, superstar, Titan. sports entertainer, whatever you wanna say, bottom line is, he's dangerous between those ropes. Well, the thing is, I'm putting my money on Davey Boy Smith Jr. choking out Matt Riddle, and then we're going to Peter Luger's Steakhouse for a private late night dinner with all the Titans. Notice Davey Boy trying to get a dominant position over Riddle in the early going. Riddle, great instincts to stay off his shoulders at any cost. Got to tell you, 2024 seems like a banner year for the World Titan Federation. You guys are on fire. They're all great years. Leap year every year. It's incredible. <laughs> Leap years. Okay, that's fine. But I'll tell you what, David Boy Smith and Matt Riddle, Matt Riddle, check this out, looking for a cross arm breaker. Oh, 
Go for an arm bar there, Joe. Think about all the power, gentlemen, that I'm accumulating so quickly. We've got the World Tag Team Championship, sure. and soon we take on Team MLW in the War Chamber, the most violent, the most extreme type of match you could ever have in sports entertainment. Four on four, two rings, two cages, barbed wire wrapped around to keep everyone out. It's gonna be a moment of a lifetime when the Titans destroy Team MLW. That's March 29th in Tampa, across the world on Triller TV Plus. But St. Laurent, are your athletes, your entertainers, prepared for such a barbaric matchup that seems out of what your vision would seem to be for where you want to take this Well, this you sport? think about it. You've got an extra ring. You've got an extra cage. So you need extra veins. You need extra muscles, and you need an extra tan. We've got every advantage you can have, but right now, Davey Boy Smith, look at this head scissors with the legs, squeezing those quads that you know he's been doing squats all week to get ready for this one. Looks like he's going for uh, head scissors there. Beautiful, but Riddle able to counter. Oh, I'm just thinking about that Peter Luger Steakhouse I talked about before. You know, they put extra hormones and testosterone in the steaks. I can't wait. Is that in the advertising? Well, no, look, it's a private dinner with a private menu. Wow. You know, you get a steak protein shake there. They put protein in the hash browns, incredible. Oh, the gravy's made of muscle milk. You gotta check it out. I don't think uh, Josh Bishop has missed many meals. This guy's bigger than I've ever seen him before. Well, and when Dave... you join the Titans, I teach you how to eat. I have a lot of responses for that, but moving on. Davey Boy Smith Jr., 6'5 in his own right. Somebody with such a rich history in pro wrestling from Stu Hart to his father and all of his uncles and, of course, the two-time Opera Cup winner. Oh. It, it's it's a, such a shocker to me to see Davy Boy, in the eyes of many, sell out his lineage to side with you, St. Laurent. Well, a lot of people like to talk about Matt Riddle's lineage, but I'm more impressed as Matt Riddle slips like an idiot. I'm more impressed by the lineage of Davy Boy Smith. His grandfather was the greatest wrestler in the history of Canada. My, my. Think about the IP that we control, the Dungeon Sue Hart, the branding, the awareness. My grandfather, the greatest prime minister in the history of Canada. We got political power. We got physical, vascular power. We can't be stopped. I believe you. Well, Stu Hart never called himself an entertainer. You don't know that. I read his private diaries. <laughs> they were inherited by Davy Boy Smith Jr. Matt Reno fighting back, but right into the back elbow by Davy Boy Smith Jr. Page 36 of the Stu Hart Diary, left in the final will and testament to Davy Boy Smith Jr., specifically says that Stu Hart wishes he was in the World Titan Federation. Oh, uh, Matt Riddle may wish he was back in the ring as Josh Bishop just took a cheap shot on the outside. Yeah, Bishop delivering that nasty right hand. Seems like the numbers might be against here, against Riddle here. Certainly you look at a matchup like this and you can think about the top level athletes up and down the card in MLW. There's grapplers, there's fighters, there's luchadors, every style represented. And it's so great to see two through and through combatants, athletes, fighters in every sense of the word, no matter their affiliation, do battle here as Davy Boy hits the suplex. Listen to these morons chanting. Don't they understand how great Canada is? The free health care, the weather is incredible, especially if you want a great tan. Everything in Canada is better. Suplex with a breeze 36 that degrees time. today. Two Saint count only. And Davey Boy, once again, relentless. <laughs> Knee over the face of Riddle. I think about when I was a child visiting my great grandfather. We would play bridge with Jack Tunney and Stu Hart, learning all the strategies. It was an incredible time. And you think about Canada, if you're not a crybaby, Joe, you don't need the sun to tan. Jack Tunney and Stu Hart. Toronto and Calgary are nowhere near each other. That's a whole other story. Because Matt Riddle's to his feet right now. New Japan, television champion, trying to fight away the onslaught of Davey Boy Smith Jr. It was only three hours by horse and carriage. <laughs> Nasty kick landed right on the chest. Riddle with the striking game perfected. Oh. 
Davey, Davey able to counter. Davey Boy Smith told me he's going to cripple Matt Riddle and dedicate the win to the memory of Carl DeMarco. Carl DeMarco? He's not dead. Well, he's still allowed to have a memory, Joe. Okay. Davey Boy Smith Jr. has Riddle now. Back suplex attempt. Riddle ends at his feet. Great dexterity by the king of the bros who hits a high knee. And what and a joke that is. Bishop, Bishop like doing up there. But Bishop is on the apron and Riddle eliminates the copy of Riddle. He could be a rude dude when he needs to be. Oh, from behind. A blind headbutt landing directly on the back of the head of Riddle. Man, chains of Andre by Davy Boy as Riddle fires away. Oh, slips underneath. Riddle connects the kick high right to the back of the head. This is where Riddle shines. Yeah. This aggression, this MMA background. Look at that beautiful suplex. Offensive. Riddle's coming back in. Explosion by the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu Black Belt. We see a catch wrestler now falling prey to the UFC fighter. Styles make fights near fall of the German suplex. And St. Laurent has gotten noticeably quieter. Well, you talk about the styles in MLW. I don't hear you talk enough about Titan style. I don't hear you talk enough about Bishop style, how veiny he is. I don't want to talk about how veiny anybody is. All you want is one style. That's everybody being vascular and listening to you. St. Laurent's a phlebotomist. I don't know if you know that. Bishop distracting Riddle, a six foot four or so distraction. You can't miss him, and Davy Boy seizes the moment. This is dangerous territory. Both wrestlers now, well, Riddle able to fight off, but they were in a bad position there. But Riddle's going to go even higher, higher risk, higher reward. Matt Riddle has not lost since his return to the Major League. High stakes here against Davey Boy Smith Jr. Look at Davey, six and a half feet tall, still able to get up there. Balancing on that top rope, it's a beautiful look for Davey. Riddle's in big trouble! Superplex and a float wow. over! Darn no! What a cover and pinning combination. Unable to get three, but if you saw Davey floating over there, able to seamlessly go for that pin, it was gorgeous. I can feel it, I can feel it. We're in the critical moments of this matchup, boys, as Davey Boy Smith hit that giant suplex, and he always kicks it into that next gear. This is his specialty when the going gets tough, when it's game seven, when it's the final minutes. That's when Davey Boy Smith Jr. shines. Can Davey Boy keep Riddle down? That remains to be seen as Riddle firing back, shot for shot. It's almost a Japanese strong style that we're seeing here. These men given every strike, everything they have. Keep in mind when Riddle left the UFC, he was ranked eighth in strikes landed. Filthy right hands and filthy elbows from Davey, who looks to see if his chest is bleeding. It might be. Well, Davey Boy surviving in a Riddle environment, but yeah, you can see several different colors of red and purple. Riddle and backslide. Oh, that's in deep. Shoulders down for two. Inside cradle now. Davey Boy clasped the ankles, but couldn't put him away. And, oh, wait a minute. Back oh, and beautiful forth. bridge. Riddle muscles his way out. Backslide coming up again. Got him, no. Wow, this is as evenly matched as you'll see in MLW. Superstar versus pro wrestler, MMA versus grappler. This is combat sports. And this is sports entertainment. And Davey Boy's wearing the war wounds. Call it what you will, Davey Boy may be in trouble. Victory roll! Two! No! Riddle popped up quick there. Looks to go for maybe a triangle. He's got the arm, but his shoulder was down there for a second, Joe. He's got to watch it. He can't get full leverage on that triangle. When Riddle's two shoulders are down, he'll get counted out. It's not like have, MMA. Got to have those instincts to keep at least one shoulder off the canvas at all times. And that's going to affect his ability to position his weight the way he wants. Oh, no. Sharpshooter here. Oh, he learned this from Brett. 
He learned it as a kid. He's been doing it his whole life. I think we all did it as kids, but he just does it a little bit better, does Davey? Time tested and perfected. Notice the wide base. The legs are spread far apart. Oh, oh slipped out. Riddle slipped out. The sweat. Out. It was the sweat on that foot. It wouldn't have happened if they made him wear shoes. It's not fair. Great adjustment by Davey Boy Smith. The perspiration helped Riddle, but Davey Boy, the combatant, the catch wrestler, adjusted until Riddle found the rope. He has till five to break it. He used four and a half seconds. Seems like all the WTF guys will use the entire four to five count to keep that submission in, doing a little more damage. In the World Titan Federation, we actually have a six count on the rope. A six count? That's not right. Float over there. Beautiful by Riddle, but Davey, pinning combination. A lot of weight on top of Riddle. Riddle reverses. Has Davey Boy Kelly What? I'm going to talk to the commission. Why do you need to talk to the commission? You're an entertainment outfit. St. Laurent. Riddle just knocked out Bishop. St. Laurent leaving as quick as he came into the booth. Sports entertainment will no longer hold down or restrict what Matt Riddle can do as an athlete, as a fighter. The New Japan Pro Wrestling World Television Champion. time in New York, Kojima won the first MLW World title from ever cementing Major League Wrestling in this great sport. Now he's back, but is he 100%? We'll find out as he readies for War Chamber when he teams with Alex Kane and Okamura against the World Titan Federation tonight. But first, we'll get the scoop from the boss himself. What's Court Bauer got to say? It's up next. a big event or two around the corner here in Major League Wrestling. War Chamber just two weeks away on Triller TV Plus. And we'll be back here on YouTube and BN Sports April 20th with a free special available across the world. Then Cesar Duran takes charge. May 11th for Azteca Lucha. And June 1st, we go to Atlanta to Riot. Battle Riot 6. I cannot wait to see what surprises are in store for us in this road ahead. But I also can't wait for what the boss has on his mind. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, please give a warm welcome to the founder and CEO of Major League Wrestling, Court Bauer! Well, an important night like this, you know what Court Bauer's in front of the camera, there's always some big news to be shared, a lot of big moves being made in the Major League, and I understand Court Bauer going to give us some updates. What's the boss man going to say? You having a good time tonight? Yeah. Good fights? Yeah. All right, well, I'm a New Yorker like you, so I have a little something special planned. Oh, oh, oh. oh my this? God, what the hell? There is blood on your hands. 
the new blood of Kuntra for fear to bring families back to this world. In an age of cruelty is upon us. They just look such like stars. I idolize them. You want the real story? Let's get it. Major League Wrestling, and we're still recovering from that disturbing scene. Contra unit led by Mads Cruel Kruger, launching an odd assault on, on many members of the locker room, but most unsettling of all, Court Bauer, our boss, our CEO. We hope to have an update on his condition before we go off the air, but the action keeps coming, partner. We gotta get back to the ring, because a major power struggle is in the battle. The following bout is in the We'll see if that helps lead to an advantage in power for Azteca Lucha and Cesar Duran, who seconds Magnus ringside. There you see Jesus Rodriguez having some words there with Magnus. So disgusted with Paladino. Generation star, Star Junior, a promotione Dorado, and you know Selena was looking to bring the heavy artillery after the night she had at Intimidation Game. Both of these luchadors that are featured in tonight's contest, they both have that lucha libre background. And whether you're talking about Selena de la Renta or Jesus Rodriguez or even Cesar Duran, we look to see the power struggle between these two factions and what exactly it means here for MLW. 
Cesar Duran, Selena De La Renta, the two most influential power brokers in the history of the major league, but there can only be one alpha. There can only be one leading the charge and controlling the Lucha pipeline. And this may do a lot to determine who has that power at the end of the broadcast. You know, we talked about Magnus being under the tutelage of Cesar Duran, under the direction of Cesar Duran. Magnus is actually the cousin of Mystico, and it was Mystico who defeated Rocky Romero to take the world middleweight title for Promociones Dorado into Cesar's Azteca Lucha. As they lock up in the middle of the ring, De La Renta versus Duran, Star versus Magnus. It's 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 really a power struggle for supremacy here. Yeah, I mean, both sides had a chance to pit the best luchador they could find for this special challenge matchup. And certainly two athletes who have crossed paths before, CMLL, Arena Mexico. But well, check out that slick counter. We know that the history between Cesar and Selena goes back many years. We know Cesar had loaned Selena money. Maybe she didn't pay it back as quickly or the same way Cesar wanted. There were consequences. We know that Cesar Duran was abducted. It looked like his own ass took a henchman was infiltrated. We now know Selena was behind that as a way to get her spot back, controlling the luchadors in the major league. Now both are here at the same time, and to see these two entities at ringside at the same time, even being back where I am, it's intimidating because none of these two entities, Selena or Cesar, have ever responded well to the word no. Is that great shot from our production team of Selena De La Renta coaching in Spanish to her wrestler, her luchador. Yeah, and Selena's got a good one in Star Jr. because he's one third of the current CMLL trios champions, along with Atlantis Jr. and Volador Jr. Been making a career for himself at CMLL for about a decade now. So certainly Star Jr.'s got the, 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 the success, the yes. resume, yes, and the does. staying power. And Look Star at Jr. Yeah, evasive with Star Jr. They're able to get out of the way, causing Magnus to go out the corner. What? Oh. Over the top post. That corner post, he was able to clear it. And you saw where they landed. Straight up concrete, no protection. Star Jr. looking good against Magnus. And feeling good too. You hear the voice of Jesus Rodriguez also doing some coaching on the outside. Staff member getting crushed there. We got by people. Magnus. People getting hurt out here, casualties. This thing is so lightning fast. All you can do is react sometimes. And into the guardrail went Star Jr. Can, can you imagine the lofty bonuses have been promised one of these luchadors if they can win? Yes. Think about how great pivotal point, Joe. this match is after what went down in the Intimidation Games. Think about how pivotal it is as we count down the days to War Chamber. Look at Star now. Hits the opposite rope. Put on his brakes for a second, but goes forward again. Basement drop kick there. Beautiful. And Magnus into the people. Star Jr. is in a... Look out! In the zone! Oh Tom Cotero! He went all the way into the crowd with that Tope going hero. It just momentum took him into the second row. The momentum carried Star Jr. into the crowd. And these fans are in awe of the Lucha Libre excellence being presented. I think we're all in awe. I mean, some may scoff at the way Selena does business. But the way Jesus Rodriguez does business. Not too loudly, they don't. They don't. That's that's a fact. And some may even disagree with the way Cesar Duran always calling for violence. But, but you can't disagree with their ability to recruit great wrestlers, great luchadors. And went to spring off. And Magnus able to grab onto the leg and shift that momentum. Here comes a whip into the rail. Look out, reversal. Fired up as Star Jr. 
He goes in, though, but a big counter by Magnus. And I think Star Jr., his neck may have landed on that, that guardrail. Those are metal guardrails underneath that MLW branding. Christian, this is unlike any Lucha Libre matchup I can recall seeing. It speaks to the high stakes. It speaks to the frame of mind, the urgency, as Selena and Cesar coach their charges up. Nice Irish whip with a trip there. Something I'm not familiar with. Innovative offense by these luchadors. Uh, we're all familiar with this. And the original name, a Tiger Fane kick. And Magnus in with the cutter as well. That cutter landed nasty. If he goes in for the cover, this could be in Joe. Could do it here. Hooks the leg. Two and a half. Yeah, he was able to actually hook the outside leg, creating leverage on the shoulders, but it wasn't enough. Magnus, one half of the CML Mexican National Tag Team Champions. So both these men draped in gold as, check out the counter, the agility of Star Jr. But it's Magnus, stays a step ahead. Look at Magnus here, beautiful. Double underhook into the pile driver. Magnus now looking to get that cover. Lateral press here. He was watching the referee to see that third hand come down. But it was only two, not to be for Magnus yet. And these fans, I tell you, some of them may like Cesar, some of them may like Selena. I mean, really, none of them are really that likable. You really want to go down to their resume and what they've done to who. But bottom line is, these fans love great Lucha Libre. That's what we're getting. They really do. It's kick after kick after kick from Star Jr. And Star now goes to the corner, scales the ropes, springboard, beautiful oh. drop kick. Insane agility. Is that all? No. Yeah, these luchadors that are coming in, whether they're from Cesar Duran or Selena de la Renta, they are so talented. The best of Mexico are here. And that, that might do it, Joe. That was nasty. He landed it perfectly. Star Jr., the destroyer in a near fall. What we're seeing here, too, is the corazones of both fighters, the heart of both men able to kick out when we think they're done here in the broadcast booth. It is not done. This match continues. The fight in these men, very, very impressive. And both men from a standing position. Center ring. It is Magnus. It is Star Jr. It is some of the best luchadors in the world as that pipeline continues to widen. Both men sending slaps to the face. Both answering. Double chop now. They're thinking the same thing. They've scouted each other so well. Well, there's no better way to send a message to the middleweight champion, Mystico, than to do it through his cousin, Magnus. That's the goal of Star Jr. But pump even kick. Keel had both men down. Pump kick for pump kick. They trade him in the center. Both men down. The referee begins his 10 count. He's already at two. Selena really trying to get her man off. She needs Star Jr. to wake up, and Magnus and Cesar Duran conferring on the side here. And Byron Carey. Magnus has Star Jr. in position. Cesar Duran's charge, scaling the ropes, but cut off at the pass. Star now going up top. He's going to match the high risk attitude of Magnus. He's going all the way to the top. He has to balance on that top rope. Is it a suplex he's looking for? Yes, a superplex in the center of the ring. Way up high and scores big. Selena, a wide smile on her face as Star Jr., a double stop, sends a message to Mystico with a win. She's a 
on top of the world. Star Jr., a victory for Promotione Dorado. We want to take you back one more time, even though it's not easy to look at, to what Contra unit perpetrated just a few moments ago, the assault on many members of the locker room, as well as our CEO, Corp Bauer. We understand that New York's finest have arrived. Medical help is here as well. Christian, I can't recall the last time I felt a vibe like this in the air. It feels so dangerous. It feels so perilous. And we may have no choice but to lock this place down. Coming up next, a War Chamber preview. The World Titan Federation takes on Alex Kane and Cozy Max. What's the condition of Kojima's MCL? And who's going to get revenge? Wait, what? Hold up. What, what happened? What happened? Silver or lead, Salina, you choose. Did Azteca Lucha just take out Salina's numero uno? As if this night hasn't been chaotic enough, during the break, Court Bauer and several MLW wrestlers requiring medical attention were being loaded into ambulances when Contra apparently attacked again. This is disturbing, it's sick. So many people have been hurt tonight, and we still have a main event at War Chambers two weeks away. The following is a six-man tag team bout, except for one fall. Introducing team number one, promoted by Sigma Rock. It is great to see him on two feet here. 
New York, world champion, Ian Okamura, Cozy Max will tag together with the former world champion, Alex Kane, as they make their way down to the ring. This is the powerhouses of Major League Wrestling here tonight in New York City. All that is true, but we know the knees of Kojima are far from 100%. An injury exacerbated by Minoru Suzuki at Intimidation Games. That scene was planted by Danny Boy Smith. The fight's breaking out, Joe. And you know Danny Boy has smartened up the entire WTM of how and where to target on the knee and the injured MCL of Satoshi Kojima. Three men finding each other, six men rather, but finding an opponent. And now Rich looking to motivate his team, is Rich Holiday. Well, the tides are turned. Alex Kane and Cozy Max, there's no language barrier, there's no style barrier. It's united by a common enemy. How interesting is it, Joe, to watch? A triple Cozy Cutter. This oh. could be all early. Okumura the cover, but a kick out by Holiday. Yeah, that was close. How interesting is it to watch these, the current world champion who you see in the center of your screen there, and the former world champion, Alex Kane, to see them tag up. It, it doesn't just show the sportsmanship, but it shows the common goals. You don't have to be enemies to have common goals. You don't have to be friends. You just have to have your goals in order. Alex Kane certainly does. I'm just enjoying seeing St. Laurent out of sorts at ringside. Amen to that, brother. St. Laurent prepping his team for War Chamber. That's not an environment, as I mentioned earlier, that strikes me to the advantage of the, the tan, vascular Titan Federation superstar. How, how tan is Lawler, though? Is he, like on a one through 10, is he like a medium tan? I'm gonna say like a two. Well, hey, a month ago, St. Laurent was out here saying that the WCF multiverse has about 27 different Tom Waller. That's so true. Maybe there'll be a tan one. Yeah, many of them Maybe there'll be a smart one who will leave St. Laurent. Who knows? Side headlock, Okamura, who has become a legend in his own right, former CMLL tag and trios champion, and the corner man of Satoshi Kojima. Richard Holiday got the size, got the speed. Back and forth shots. We've seen Holiday. What a beautiful make, right hand. We've seen Holiday make inroads to the MLW World title. That is something he hasn't held yet, but feels it is nearly a birthright. And look at this. Holiday cuts him off with that back elbow and immediately goes for a cover. You say what you want about Richard Holiday, but I put him up with the smartest wrestlers in Major League Wrestling. It's just, yeah, he's got the body, yeah, he's got the speed, but it's his brain that really stands out for me. No question about that, and that gives that air of superiority that makes Holly believe he's better than everybody else. But he and Okumura into a standoff. Holiday believes if you're on his level, you're breathing rarefied air. Imagine fighting a legend like Okumura and having him on his heels. I mean, imagine not letting that psych you out. Richard Holiday is locked in right now, and he wants to give Tom Lawler some. Go get you some, Tom. Two former MLW World Champions, Kane successfully defended against Lawler a few months ago on one of our premium live events. Look at that, shoots for the double leg, unable to get it, but actually turning him over there. Lawler gives up his back, and now jockeying for position are Kane and Lawler. Although you call Lawler a sports entertainer, or certainly St. Laurent does, it, it really, his background is mat wrestling, it is grappling. Well, really, that's that's the whole point of it, is that Lawler doesn't need yeah. smoke and mirrors Agreed. and rebranded and, and sold as something he's not. Tom Lawler, he's filthy, he's a down and dirty fighter, he can hurt you, why can't we just say that? Everything doesn't have to be so clean and pristine and corporate and homogenized. Lawler can fight, and it's because Lawler can fight that St. Lamont controls the world tag titles now. Lawler looking to get some reactions here from New York City. He doesn't care if they're pissed, he doesn't care if they boo or cheer. Lawler is getting paid to fight, and that will that's what he will do. And Kane turns things around 
Well, the World Titan Federation is successful at War Chamber, and this rebranding continues. We may see a lot more bathroom humor and pose downs and two, but Kane gets a near fall. We may have to wear silly hats out here. Who knows what might happen if St. Laurent's in control? Some were asking whether Alex Kane was done. I mean, Alex Kane was asking if he was done. Yeah. But I knew from the beginning that that was not the case. He's a young guy. Certainly, he's not a champion anymore. Now he's known as a former champion. But Alex Kane's motivation comes in getting that title back. But Christian, what do you make of what, eight, what the cover here by Okamura, two count only. We know Alex Kane's attention is split because AJ Francis has said maybe things aren't as loyal in the Bumai fight camp as they appear. Yeah, what was that? I, I've wondered about that now for weeks. How does AJ Francis know anything about the Bumaye Fight Club? Could there be a mole in the group, or is it just a mind game? Time may tell as Lawler picks the single leg. Okamura trapped in WTF territory. I talked about Richard Holiday's intelligence there, but he wasn't savvy enough to see that the ref, ref could easily disqualify his team. They don't want that. They want a big victory with the World Heavyweight Champion on the other side. If WTF gets a victory, that is a humongous win for them here tonight in New York City. We are coming to Tampa for the first time in over 20 years. We are bringing the ominous war chamber with us. And no one who enters the war chamber exits the same way. Holiday, shoulders down, two count over. Holiday with that lateral press, turning sideways to get a little more leverage on those shoulders. Wasn't interested in hooking a leg. I think he thought the leg drop would be enough to put Okamura away. You know what? A lot of times in sports entertainment, a leg drop was enough to beat somebody. That, that's but fast. not here in the major league. Our fighters have guts. Referee, you can hear him there telling him, put the feet down. Lawler. My God, Holiday's just dividing and conquering everybody. Came down, champion down. And, and notice how much pain and discomfort Kojima's in after one or two shots from Holiday. Think back to that MCL. Bishop and Lawler moving their feet there for a while. There's a certain confidence in Bishop. The cover here, only two though. There's a certain confidence in Bishop that I'm noticing tonight. It's pretty special. You can see it as he stands there waiting for his turn to get in on the action. Holiday using that size. Wait, this could be 2008. If Holiday hits this, this match is over. Okamura knows that. Turning big suplex here. And how did Okamura pull that off? He was able to get that suplex in, but he's he's on the far side from his team. Needs to inch over another five feet or so to get the tag. Will it be Kane or will it be Kojima? It's Alex Kane With coming into the ring. Faye Jackson cheering on. The leader of the Bumaye movement. Now on Lowe's, on Lawler, on Holiday. For familiar foes, but still formidable. Release suplex. Alex Kane now in for the cover. Two. Grabs the rope. That was so close. I saw that his shoulders hadn't came up, but it was the rope and that right hand. Yeah, that, that neck brace St. Louis. At least he's not wearing the bicycle helmet this yeah, time. Seriously, buddy. Shot for Josh Bishop. Shot for Holiday. Alex Kane, front chancery, looking to go for another suplex. This is his bread and butter. Kane taking some shots to the ribs, though, and look at Lawler fight out, man. That's the fighter in Lawler. You gotta wonder if Kane's 100% as well after that war with Bobby Fish and Intimidation game. Great point. A lot of war wounds on the Major League fighters, but that's the level of competition that is we are experiencing. That is the level of, of, of just a even nature that exists up and down this roster. Anyone can beat anybody on any given night. Powerbomb. Power power bomb. Covers the shoulders. Got him, go. Richard Holiday looks great tonight. As he calls, yelling out to his teammate, yeah. wants Bishop in, and Bishop supporting a, an injured right shoulder, able to come in. I'll take Bishop at 70% over most people at 100. This man is a freak of nature and a powerhouse. Okamura knows that, and he bails out the suplex assassin. Right hands from Okamura. Okamura now, beautiful suplex. And Okamura now, the numbers game does not matter to him. He takes out Holiday, takes out Waller. 
Ring is cleared for the moment. Okamura hits that somersault to Todd. All but in the ring, the power of Bishop as he's countered. Kane feeds the block. And Kane, who gives up about six inches to Bishop, still able to put his arms around the neck. Blind tag to Kojima. Bishop doesn't see it wow. as he drills Kane with a choke slayer. Be one. 